You're listening to the How to Talk to Girls podcast, where you'll learn step-by-step how to meet and seduce beautiful women, whether you're looking for one night of fun, a week-long fling, or a long-term relationship. I'm your host, Trip, and the episode starts now. Hello, and welcome to the How to Talk to Girls podcast. I'm your host, Trip Kramer from tripadvice.com. All right, this episode, what are we talking about? I want to give you some lifestyle advice. That's what I want to do for you. I want to give you some lifestyle advice that's going to help you in your life. And also, it's going to help you with being more attractive to women. So you're really killing two birds with one stone here. And I'm really excited to be talking about some of this stuff today. Three things that I think are extremely important to your self-worth, to you as a productive human being in society. And I'm not just spitting stuff out. This is stuff that I embody. This is stuff that I have worked on over the years to get to this place where I believe I am a more valuable human. And other people who I've talk to who also have these things, I believe are more valuable. And I think you're going to agree with me today too. And again, these things, it's not overnight. It took me many years. It might take you many years, but at least you know it early on. And here's the thing. At the creation of this podcast episode, I'm 34, almost 35 years old. I did not learn these things until very recently, in the past few years. I wish someone told me these a lot earlier. And if you happen to be 40 years or older, maybe this is something that you're already doing. Great. Either way, it's going to be reinforcing some of these ideas. So three secrets that really make you so much more valuable as a man, that make you appear more valuable. We're going to get into it today. Just understand that I also help in the coaching realm with lifestyle advice. Okay, I do help you in terms of getting you to the point where we're working on your lifestyle and who you are as a person so you become more valuable. Any of my current coaching clients who are listening now, I'm sure you you know that we are working on some of those things. Uh, Some people were working on just going out and doing approaches. Some people were working on making you a more valuable person so you're more attracted to people. Some people I'm working on both with. So if you need help and you want to be working on these things together, we can help you. I can help you. Trip Advice can help you. All you got to do is apply. In order to apply, you just got to go to coachedbytrip.com. That link is in the show notes. Coachedbytrip.com. That's Trip with two Ps. And I will help you in terms of becoming a more attractive, more valuable man in society to other people, to yourself. It's endless how much great work we can do together. And so I really encourage you that if you are interested in being able to get your life to the next level, that you consider coaching for yourself. So let me help you. Don't do this on your own. Let me work with you. Okay, first thing, first thing, here it is. You know what makes you more valuable? You have your own place, okay? You have your own place. This is, first of all, just good for you to be able to learn how to be alone, how to live alone. It's going to force you to cook for yourself. It's going to force you to hopefully make enough money where you can be able to live alone because it definitely is more expensive to have your own place in many cities. Living alone, having your own place is also very sexy to women. Women find it very attractive. Why? Because you're able to provide for yourself. That's valuable. That shows that you are a really productive member of society, that you're self-sufficient, that you're an effective member. So that's why it's attractive. But I want to just go a little bit deeper into more about why it's going to help you. When you have your own place, like I said, it's going to force you to do a lot of different things in your life better. It's going to force you to be able to take a place And make it look good and make it clean and make it nice without having to rely on other people in your life. Because what happens? You rely on maybe a roommate and you get maybe a little bit lazy. Who knows? But either way, it's going to force you to really be better at all these different little things, right? I already said cooking, upkeeping. It might force you to, to learn a little bit more about design and feng shui. So it's like you do this one thing and all of a sudden, you could potentially... You don't have to, but I'm just saying you could potentially knock off all of these little skills because you're forced to have your own place. 
And the biggest one of all, which I just briefly mentioned, was this idea of learning how to be alone. You will end up becoming so much stronger when you can get to a place where you don't need anybody. When you don't need anybody and you're completely self-sufficient, it makes you a stronger person. You become less needy. You learn a lot about yourself, which is good for personal development. You learn a lot when you spend a lot of time alone. I've learned that over the many years I've been living alone. You just learn about yourself. You learn about your quirks. You learn about how you handle being by yourself. And you really get to know yourself better and you form a really strong relationship with yourself. The most important relationship you'll ever have in your entire freaking life is with you. You can't ever rely on anyone else. I'm not saying that you can't sometimes rely on a friend or a family member or a girlfriend or a wife. But at the end of the day, you're going to be the one who always has your back. You're the one who needs to help yourself. Plus, you cannot fully rely on anyone else. You don't want to. You need to be your own person. You need to be independent. You need to be doing your own thing. You need to have your own place. Okay? I'm telling you, when you get to this point where you are building this relationship and you're your own roommate, you learn about some of your downfalls, your pitfalls. You learn more about some of the things that are going on inside of your brain because you have a lot more time alone. You have a lot more time with yourself. So you get to understand yourself much better, which means that you can become a stronger person. Now, of course, that's all the personal development aspect. I briefly mentioned also, it is more attractive to a woman when you have your own place. Plus, don't you want your own place? I mean, think about it. Do you want to deal with bringing a woman over when you have a roommate? It's just annoying. You're going to have to find out if they're home. You're not going to know if you can you know, use the main area. Are they with their girlfriend? Yeah. Do you have to be loud during sex? Or I mean, can you be loud during sex? Or is it going to be you know, trying to keep everything quiet and everything because you know you have a roommate? It's clearly better to be able to get to a point where you have your own place. Where you don't have to deal with coming home and someone else is there, especially when you bring a woman home. So lots of arguments for this one. I hope you agree with me. I hope you start putting it into place. I know that it may not happen for you overnight. Or maybe you're listening and you're like, cool, I already have that one. Check that off the list. That's good. Check the box right there. Uh, but either way, it's something you should be working toward. Let's go to the next one. You love your job. Now, I want to be very specific with this one. I'm not saying necessarily that you're making tons of money. Although that does help, right? You do need money to survive. And the more money you have, the more problems you can solve in your life. And if you like nice things, you can have nicer things. But I'm really talking about loving your job. What's cool about loving your job is you have a better life. You're happy. Think about this. People who don't like their job, I feel bad for you. I do. I, I feel terrible for you because your life is your work, especially if you're in America. right? You're probably working, what, eight hours out of the day? That's a large majority. That's a third of your day where you're working. The other third, you're asleep. And the other third, you're whatever, at home, hanging out, doing whatever. But a third is a lot. So if you're telling me a third of your life, or let's just say half your life, because let's just take away that other third where you're sleeping. So in your awake time, half of your awake time, you just are not happy. That's a lot of your life that just sucks. And that's going to affect all the other areas of your life. You're not going to feel motivated. You're probably not making that much money if you hate your job. Again, there's exceptions. I had a friend who was a lawyer who was making close to $200,000 a year, which is a nice salary. And what ended up happening to him is he hated it. He hated his job. And even all that money wasn't enough for him to stay. And he quit. And he ended up becoming a ski instructor. And then later on, ended up finding other work that uh, he really enjoyed. And he started really loving his life so much more because he made that decision. So I encourage you, find a job that you love. Find work that you love. Try to spend half of your life enjoying it. You will like your life. This is all we have here, right? Is this world. At least we know for now. And you're going to be happier. And you're probably going to make more money. And you're going to just be really attracting a lot of really good women. 
because women are really attracted to guys who have a passion, who love that they're, what they're doing. But if you're this guy who hates your work and is always complaining and it's not good and da 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 da, not going to be very attractive. But when you love your job, ooh, turns women on. Doesn't matter what you do. Doesn't matter. You don't have to be doing something interesting. Doesn't matter what you're doing. If you love it, women are going to love that. And I don't think we can argue with this one, right? It's going to make you a more valuable person in your life when you are happier, when you are more content. So please try to work on something that you love. Try to find work that you love. Okay, that's number two. Let's go to number three. Number three is you have things to do with your time. Okay, so we talked about the idea of loving your work, but what about the other part of your life? Some people love their work and they come home and they're very lonely. Why? They don't have many friends. They don't have many things to do. They don't have many hobbies. They don't have any other passions. They don't have any other goals that they're working on. Now, I would say you, because you're listening to this podcast, you definitely have a goal you're working on. You're trying to get better with women, which is awesome. So that's very good. So what else do you have going on in your life? Because let me tell you something. When you get a girlfriend... It's not going to be just you hanging out with your girlfriend all the time. And if that's what it is, I highly suggest that you do not do that. Why? Because it's going to make you way more needy. You do not want to be just always trying to hang out with your girlfriend. You want to have another part of your life. Because either A, you do hang out a lot with your girlfriend, the desire is going to die between you two, or B, you want to hang out a lot with your girlfriend or partner and she has her own life. So then you're going to be extra needy to want to hang out with her. So you need to have things going on in your life. If you have your own place, we're really killing again, two birds with one stone here. Because when you have your own place, you can work on skills. You can do things like cooking. You can do things like any other kind of hobby that you want to just take up in your own place without having to ask your roommate. But it can be also outside of the home. right? There are things out there, social events. If you're in a very warm place, there's hiking. If you're in cold places, maybe there's trivia nights. There's all kinds of options. I don't need to go through them right now. It all depends on where you live. And you can just look that up very easily on Google. But the big idea I'm trying to get across to you is you need to have things to do with your time. You need social activity. You need to have scheduled friend nights. You need to be doing that stuff. So you're not as focused on trying to either hang out with your girlfriend or if you don't have a girlfriend, you're not completely just sitting there all alone all the time. It gets very depressing. It's not going to be very good for you. So just imagine. Imagine what your life looks like. Imagine how happy you're going to be, how fulfilled you're going to be when you enjoy what you do for a living. You're able to come home and you don't have to answer to anyone. You have your own place. Again, exceptions for when you eventually live with a woman. But that's different. You're creating a partnership together. It's different when you have a roommate versus a live-in girlfriend or wife. But at this point, right, you love what you do. You have your own place. You get to do what you want. You get to enjoy your time building yourself without distractions. And because you don't have the distractions, you can do things with your life. Other things than just coming home and sitting on your couch and hopefully not wallowing over the fact that you hate your job, but doing something that's going to be more interesting. And hey, maybe you're doing these things. Fantastic. You're now already a more valuable person. You just have to push yourself to go out there and start meeting women. If these things are not things that you have or things that you're working on, I just highly suggest you get started on it. It might take a few years, but it's worth the investment. right? It's an investment. You have to start the thing now to get the return on the investment down the line. It's not instantaneous. So you work on it as soon as possible, finding a job you love, having your own place, and doing things with your time besides your work. Start putting the things in place now so eventually you can get to the place where you are happier, more content, more valuable, more attractive to women, and really just loving your life. And for any of you that already have these things, if you're still listening to this episode, Press pause right now and start talking to women because you're more than halfway there. Now it's just taking you to be a little bit more charismatic, a little bit more social, and just putting yourself out there more so you can meet more women. Because 
when they go on a date with you and you're talking about how much you love your job and you love your life and the things that you're doing, and then you can take her back to your place because this is something that is showing that you're self-sufficient, your own domicile, it's game over. It's game over. I'm telling you. This is very, very important stuff. So don't look it over. Try to work on it today. And if you need help, let me help you. Of course, I can help you. You can just apply for coaching. Go to coachbytrip.com and let's start putting in the steps to getting to this place while at the same time still approaching women and getting better at being charismatic and talking to women and getting dates. We can work on it all at once, believe it or not. You just need a little bit of guidance. So let's kind of pause there. Let's go into some questions. I want to take some questions that people have been emailing in. I don't want to kind of overwhelm you with more information than you really need. There's not much more to say here. Okay, These are the things that a lot of guys don't think about, but they're just not implementing it. So now I've made you aware. I've made you conscious. I made you think about it just a little bit more. So let's get you out there and working on it. And for now, let's go ahead and take some questions because I know you guys have been emailing in and I have not taken any questions in a while. So let's get into it. Here's Tom from last month. He says, Hey, Trip, my name is Tom. I'm 23, living in Portland, Maine. Big fan of your podcast and YouTube videos. I've listened to every podcast over the past three months and implemented all the actions you advice for the betterment of myself. I've been going out and talking to random people in different environments. I met a girl a few months ago at a bar where we hit it off. We live two hours and 30 minutes apart. I drive up when I have the opportunity, but I'm busy on the weekends and she's busy with work. However, we've kept this up for over a month, but the texting isn't as engaging as it once was. So I called her out on it and got a response along the lines of, it's hard because you're far away from me and I need constant attention. So Trip, my questions for you are, how do you make a long distance relationship work? Is it ideal? Is there anything to make it easier? How should I proceed? I'm not attached or in love with this girl, but I enjoy hanging out and getting to know her. Should I just move on or is there something I'm not seeing? Thanks, Trip. Keep up the great work. Okay. Well, Tom, very simple. You should not be getting into long distance relationships. They are a complete waste of time because you can't really create a true relationship where you two are really connecting with each other. Okay. You can't do that if you guys are not able to see each other. You don't need to see each other seven days a week, but you should be seeing each other at least a couple days per week. And if that is really hard for you to do because you're in a long distance relationship, it's not going to work out. Also, mini red flag here with this girl that says she needs constant attention. Sounds like she's not playing by some of the rules that I just mentioned earlier about having her own life. But I get it. She needs constant attention because she feels distant from you because you guys don't really hang out that much because she lives so far away. So no... Tom, it's not ideal. You don't want to do anything to make it easier other than getting a girl who lives not that many miles away from you. It should not be longer than 45 minutes at the most, at the very most. I mean, think about it. Isn't it much more enjoyable when you can have a girlfriend that lives close to you so it's easy to see each other? It doesn't mean you have to see each other all the time. But what it means is that you guys, when you do decide to see each other, it's going to be easy. It's a quick Uber ride or a quick drive over, a quick bike ride or a quick train ride over to her place, or she's coming to your place where you live alone, hint, hint, right? So no long distance relationships, waste of time. There's no girl special enough in this world to create a long distance relationship with, okay? So I want you to be going out there meeting more women who, and there are a lot of them out there, who are living close to you. Let's take another email. Hey, Trip. Thanks for taking the time to read my email. I live in a rural community of Minnesota with not so many people, let alone beautiful women. I'm trying to change my ways and build up my self-confidence, but it's tough. I've been listening to your podcasts a lot lately and trying to implement things so they work, but I need a lot of work. I got low confidence in myself and have some past issues that haunt me. I have trouble getting dates and keeping girls interested in me. This might be a challenge for you, but I would appreciate the chance to get help to try to to get the life I truly want. Anyway, hope to hear from you. Thanks, Jamie. Jamie. Got to admit here, it's a little bit of a vague question. If you need really, really, really specific help, I highly encourage you to apply for coaching at coachedbytrip.com. But I'm going to do my best here to help you. 
So it sounds like what you're saying is you live in a very small town, so it's very hard to implement things because there's not a lot of people there to implement with. Well, A, I challenge that notion. A lot of people who I work with, they always say, oh, you know, I live in a small town. There's always a town that's bigger, that's maybe a, a short drive away. Okay, maybe it's a long drive away. But even if it's two hours, which is, that's, by the way, you can get really far in two hours, right? Even if it's two hours and you can go once a week on a Saturday to drive two hours, which I know sounds crazy, but I'm just trying to give you an answer to get whatever you can do to get to people. So if, even if you need to drive two hours and you need to work on approaching a woman who's within a two-hour radius, so meaning going to a town that has more people that's anywhere from one minute to two hours away where you can practice all the approaching and practice building the confidence up. Maybe you want to think about moving. That's B, okay? Is you want to think about moving, going to a place where there are more people. If it's really important for you to get with the woman who you really want, you don't want to settle, I can't magically put women in your town. So you have to go to a town either by driving there or living there to be able to work on this stuff. I hear a lot of these issues, a lot of guys, and I get it, it's different situations for everybody, but they're in the situation where they are just stuck in a town and they don't know what to do. And it doesn't sound great. I highly suggest for you, as a guy who wants to better improve himself and be social and be around people and approach a lot of women, you shouldn't be living in a town that has a lot of people. Minimum 100,000. Minimum. Okay? Because you want to have opportunities. There's not a lot of opportunities in those small towns. I mean, Captain Obvious over here, right? Duh, because there's not as many people. So all I can say is you might have to suck it up. I remember, and I've said this before in the podcast, there was a time when I lived in Los Angeles. I lived in a suburb. And the suburb just didn't have a lot of people there that I could do approaches with. So I had to drive 45 minutes back and forth most nights of the week to go out to the main area of Hollywood to do approaches and work on confidence and work on charisma and all that stuff. I didn't like it, but I didn't have any other options. And this is something I really wanted. So it sucks. I feel bad for you that you happen to just be in this situation. But these are your options. And if you're thinking, well, there's no way I can get out of this town, well, you got to figure out a way where you can do it in terms of making more money or using your skills to get a job somewhere else. There's the internet, which is a beautiful thing, which can teach you how to make money from home and build skills that are important that people will pay for. I mean, heck, I'm a dating coach. Not many of us around, but there's a something for everyone. So what can you do to make money? What can you do to think outside the box, get outside of your town? That's what I recommend for you. I'm going to wrap it up here. These are some really good questions. And I just gave you a lot to think about. I don't want to overwhelm you with so much information. So we went over long distance, bad. No long distance relationships. Get into a city that has a lot of people. And at the end of the day, work on these things that make you more valuable. Love what you do. Get your own place and make sure that you're doing fun, interesting things with your time. Just a couple things, work on those, and you'll be surprised how much better your life is going to be. Thank you. If you need coaching, you know where to go. Coachbytrip.com. And I'll talk to you in the next episode.